Alternatively, um, if you wanted to create a T-spline, um, but use something that's a bit more uh, specific, a little bit more exact, um, per, perhaps you have a kind of design motif or a kind of design concept uh, that you want to work with, and you have the ability to trace over it, or you have line work uh, that represents what that object is, and you want to be able to develop that line work as a T-spline's object. Now, T-splines has a great um, tool, uh, which is called uh, T-splines from Lines, and it entails creating a control polygon, connecting the edges, and then running the TS from Lines command. And so the premise of working with this tool is that you can um, go, you know, get to something like this, um, which is a, a fully, uh, you know, smooth uh, kind of organic um, uh, component from something as simple as this. What it boils down to is understanding a little bit about how um, curves need to be laid out um, for using with T-splines and how, depending upon where control points are placed, um, the curvature uh, of the T-splines will be influenced. So when we turned on our control grids and we had it set to uh, control points, we saw the control polygon surrounding um, our, our T-spline surface. And we could see the control points, and we could see the lines connecting them, and uh, and that's really how we're able to interface and modulate our um, our form. So when we push the control points really close together, the curvature would would obviously uh, uh, get much much tighter. And so what we're going to do is take a look at then how to begin to model to account for the fact that depending upon where you have uh, your T-junctions, where you've defined uh, your control points, um, you will ultimately be able to influence the uh, curvature uh, or, the, or the smoothing uh, T-splines behavior. So we're going to start with a little exercise that um, takes a look at how to, mod uh, to model um, a very simple primitive, how to edit it, how to combine some of the functionality in Rhino uh, for working with curves like chamfering, for instance, um, and create uh, control polygon line segments. Now, ultimately, what we're going to try to achieve is what we see here on the far right, which is a uh, fully smooth, um, organic um, kind of form um, by using something as simple as um, just a set of lines as an input. All right. Now, this process is something which um, I'm really quite fond of because, you know, again, it emphasizes really simple and kind of small um, kind of design moves that then are compounded um, through some tool and its capabilities. So you get to something more complex or something very organic looking um, by maintaining uh, very uh, high levels of control uh, and specificity at a much coarser level. Now. When we start um, modeling, I, I typically will create a layer called boundary. Um, and because I'm kind of doing this in, in order, I might you know, throw a little zero, zero out in front of it um, so that this will be my first layer. Now I'm going to create a rectangle. And I'm just going to make it eight units by eight units. And I'm going to create um, some more uh, geometry in here to use as I begin to model um, the T-splines. Now, if you notice, um, here we have an offset polyline, right? And we have a corner chamfer, or chamfer. And so here is the center point of our boundary. So my idea is, is to draw another square right, in the quadrants here, offset that square so we have some depth, and then edit its control points so that we can start to modify what it looks like here. So I'll create a new layer, and these will be my uh, polylines. Now I'm going to use my rectangle tool again. Now this time I'm going to snap to the corner and I'm just mousing over until I center snap. 
Now, the reason why I'm getting the center snap is because I have my object snaps on and um, I have center selected here. So um, that's really uh, you know quite helpful. Now, because I'm going to be building a T-spline between this and something else, I actually need another square. Um, so I'm going to use the offset command. And um, that's from curve offset and curve. And I'm just going to say a distance of uh, 0.25. Now, I can turn the control points on of this guy, and uh, I can move them. All right. And you'll notice that just by doing that, I start to get uh, you know, a slightly different variation uh, on the shape that I had before. So again, I'm just using uh, the basic Rhino commands of turning on control points, selecting them, and moving them. And I'm actually snapping using my midpoint because I have this midpoint, this line segment to, to snap to. Now this is this is pretty cool. This is not looking too bad. Um, but I want to add some more detail here at the corner um, of what this is going to look like. So I'm going to actually chamfer um, the corners here. So I'm going to go to curve, chamfer, and I'm just going to click and click again. Now, I know that I want this to be able to connect to another one, so I'm going to go ahead and modify these control points so that they snap back to uh, my edge. And If you notice, that was perpendicular, so now I'm using my perpendicular um, object snap. So that's really the detail that I'm going for right here at the corner. So since I have this drawn, right, I'm going to take a look under transform and see what it looks like when I start to mirror. So I'm just going to mirror from here to here. I'll mirror up as well. And so this is my basic kind of design element. But if you notice, um, this guy right here, right, if I were to just work with this, I wouldn't need to necessarily model all of this, right? So this, this, that's something to keep in mind, you know. If you're able to kind of reduce the overhead of the modeling down to something as simple as this, um, that might be a good idea to be able to facilitate faster modeling. Now, when we look at the construction of um, this element, you'll notice that this is actually a series of line segments um, that are connecting right the interior to the exterior. So I'm going to draw line segments from each corner to its corresponding neighbor. I just used the basic command line segment or sing single line actually and I'm just going to click. You notice I'm just clicking here and just clicking to each of these. Now, with those drawn now, I can create a T-spline surface. And it's really as simple as just typing in, you know, let's create a new layer. I'll call this T-splines. And just going right up here to the T-splines menu from curves, I will use the command from lines. Now, when I select these, if you notice, I have orange, I have a single face, and then I have red. Okay, so this is actually giving uh, an error, to saying, you know what, I'm not exactly sure what it is you're trying to achieve here. It doesn't make sense. Well, we have polyline on the outside polyline on the inside, and line segments connecting. So if you think about that in terms of you know, just 
ge geometrically what's going on there, it doesn't really make sense because you have both open lines and closed polylines. So for this command to work well, um, you actually need to explode so that you have line segments. So if you remember, the, the command is actually TS um, from lines. And with that exploded, I can select right all of these lines and run the command again. Excellent. So let's see what happens. We have a T-spline. Okay, so this is our T-spline surface. And that surface, um, if you notice, right, is connected as one element. So that TS from lines command is just, I mean, it's amazing uh, because it results in a fully connected piece of geometry. And if I toggle to smooth, you'll see that it smooths this out. Really cool. Now, if you guys um, remember, right, that command edit mode, right, gives us a window into the world of this object. We have its edges. For instance, if I select an edge and I move it up, right, you can see that you can very quickly and easily start to, to modify this geometry. All right. So that, that's great, uh, but I actually want to have the rest of my geometry in here. So let's take a look. Let's take this guy, and um, I'm just going to copy him over. We'll run through this quickly, um, kind of how you can, can take it to the next step. But uh, for right now, we're just going to look at how to mirror. Now, if you notice, if we want to um, have this element mirrored on this side, and mirrored up. Um, one thing we have to be careful about is that we don't actually create duplicates. So if I am going to mirror about this axis, right, I can't have this geometry selected. Transform mirror, mirroring up. This will ensure that I do not have a duplicate here. Now if I run that again and I deselect here and here in mirror, you'll see that now I do not have duplicates here. This is all working well. But again, the interesting thing about this command is that it's as simple as just selecting all of that and just going right here from lines. All right. Now if you notice though, all right, we're able to at the corners articulate the geometry, but once we get over here, because we only have two edges, right, we are not able to smooth the corner. So this goes back to that slide when we were talking about thinking through the problem, right, what needs to happen in order to facilitate this smooth transition, right, and you can see here it's really that offset that happens to the interior. So if I were to, for instance, take this and I, I say extrude, right, and I select my faces, I'll just bring these guys in just a little bit. All right, you'll see that now we have this fully smoothed object. And, you know, it has edges, you know, so if we went into um, our edit mode, and I were to select at the edge level, Some of these you might want to lock the layers so they're not in your, you know, in your way and um, disrupting you. Um, you can see that you can start to modify, right, the edge.
and bring this guy up. Now you can start to see the the depth there on the interior. And we're able to get right to that smooth object very quickly. So that's a very powerful tool. You can see that just going from something as simple as this line work here, right? On the right, you're able to get to something um, um, pretty robust, um, smooth, and continuous. This is also on the interior. You can see uh, it's going to be um, hollow right now um, until it's made solid, and we can just exit right out of the um, edit mode. All right, so that's that's really great.